Allen Iverson, when um, he and I didn't speak, it got so ugly in 2010 that I was told there was people looking for me to do me harm. Really? Because of of how bad it appeared with me and AI. And, well, you know, he's from the streets. I'm from the streets. So from Queens, I yeah. went down to Atlanta where, where, where I had a crew. And I went down there looking for no police involved, no anything. But I'm like, you're looking for me. You're going to find me. I'm not going to be that guy. I ain't running because I ain't living my life in hiding. That's not happening. And so he met up with me. It was a complete lie. There was nobody looking for me. There was nothing like that going on. He just didn't have anything to say. And when we sat down, finally, it almost broke my heart because I've always had a lot of love for him because we've always been tight. But, you know, he got into some situations and you can't just ignore every damn story when you're a journalist. You got Mm -hmm. a job to do. And I think what really resonated with me was that he looked me dead in my face. And all of these stories that was percolating, he said, I don't give a shit about none of those stories. You know me. I don't care about that. All I care about is that your name was on the byline. So to him, Damn. it wasn't the story. It was the fact that it was me. Let somebody else write it. Let somebody else say that shit. Not you. Because you my man. And so we ultimately reached an understanding because there's so much stuff that I had left out at mm-hmm. that time. And I didn't think that what I wrote was harmful in any way. But when I looked at him, it didn't mean anything to him. All he cared about is that it was me. He said, not you, not you, you my man. And I was like, that is the day that I knew that I could never cover him again. Cause I love him so much. He's like a little brother to me. Mm-hmm. And that was the day I said, I got it. And from that point forward, I have nothing to say about him unless I talk to him first because objectivity is out the window. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are like this. That's my man. We talk about three times a month. You know, I'm always checking up on him. (laughs) When I go down to Carolina, I go see him. I go check on him the whole bit. That's my man, you know? And so I know things about him that he would never, ever, ever tell any reporter on Mm -hmm. this earth. That's my guy. And so because of that, you recognize that that line has been crossed. I'm not going to be objective when it comes to him. That's a friend. So that's that's, a great that's friend. what that's my brother. Has, and that's uh, the way it's going to be. Have, have some personal amazing. relationships that you've had with like other athletes. Does that affect the way you report on them? No, this was the only time that's happened because I think that he was a guy that was in a rare situation that required more. Mm. See, with the other dudes, it's like. That's strictly sports. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Kobe and I were tight. Kobe and I had conversations after Eagle County, Colorado, that has never been repeated and never will be repeated. Um, But I will tell you, he died proclaiming his innocence. I will tell you that. Yeah. But I will tell you also that, you know, at the end of the day, most conversations and most relationships I have with these dudes, you know, are about basketball. I would tell you, me and Shaq, that's different. You know, when we talk about the Iverson relationship that I have, well, I had a relationship like that to a lesser degree with Kobe, and I had a relationship damn near identical to that with Shaq. So, you know, outside of that, you know, even though I have relationships with a lot of people, they understand you play like shit, I'm going to call it. You play great, I'm going to call it. I'm not going to lie to my viewers or listeners. And it's not anything for me not to violate the code of not revealing personal stuff because I don't do that anyway. 